And we are back with part three of Genesis 5 through 10 this week. And this is for January 27th, 2020. And this is the reading through the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life version, TLV. Now I'm going to just recap here um, from chapters 6 through 9. We're already, we're already heading into chapter 10. And I want to recap this and what has happened. So from chapter 6 through 9, it tells of the flood. Um, and prior to the flood, the fallen angels had taken human women as wives and created a race of giants. In Genesis 6, 3, the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. And this is from a King James version, actually, um, for that he is also, he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. So he had cut off this, this 969 years of living or, you know, um, it's probably one of the longest ones, um, to, to being 120 years. In chapter 6, it tells of the giants in the earth, the corruption and every imagination of evil on the hearts of men. And the Lord grieved um, that he had even created man, and he decided he needed to, to destroy what he had created because it was so evil and it was corrupt. Um, the fallen ones had infiltrated and, and had really messed up the earth. Um, he found Noah, his wife, their three sons and their son's wives to be uncorrupt. And he spared this family. So this is, this is how Noah and his family got to, to get through the flood. And they lived through that. He had given Noah express instructions to build the ark down to the very minute detail. And God established his covenant with Noah that he would keep them alive and of the clean beasts and every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, male and female. And God instructed Noah to gather food for his family and everything. That's amazing, you know, that during that whole time, this whole food supply actually lasted. And I'm sure that God supernaturally increased that food supply for them. So then he instructed Noah to take clean beasts by the sevens and fowls by the sevens, both male and female. God warned that he was bringing a flood to destroy everything. And again, Noah was 600 years when the flood came to destroy the world. It happened in the second month on the 17th day of the month. Now, this is the Hebrew calendar. So the month would be Chesvan, and that is spelled C-H-E-S-H-V-A-N, and the day 17 on the civil calendar. Chesvan is the beginning of the rainy season in Israel. So Chesvan 17 occurs in the autumn and could fall in October or November. Now, I did a teaching on this um, back around that time frame. And um, the year 2019 in the Gregorian calendar, it would fall on, it, it had fallen on November 15th. So Chesvan 17 for 2020 is November 4th, 2020. So when we get close to that we think about you know we think about Noah and the flood during that time so apparently at some point there'd been a debate about what was the second month um also you know on on the Hebrew calendar and since it was agreed that Tishri is considered the first month then Chesvan followed Tishri so that is how that was that was all settled. Tishri 1 is the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, also known as the Feast of Trumpets, and the head of the year. And Tishri 1 is going to be September 19th, 2020 for this year. Um, so that's a little bit on that. Um, the end of the 40 days of rain, when the rain stopped, it actually fell on Kislev 27. And we just had passed that in 2019. It actually fell on December 25th of 2019. This year, it will be December 13th of 2020 that that, that Kislev 2027 20, will fall. Interestingly, until the waters receded and the ground was fully dried, a whole year passed. And Noah and his family could, before they could exit the ark. And when they could exit the ark, it was on Chesvan 27, a year and 10 days. So that 
in 2020 will be November 20th. I mean, I'm sorry, November 14th, 2020 will be chest band 27. So it must have been difficult for Noah and his family to be shut up on an ark for that length of time. All life that was not inside the ark perished. In chapter 8, God made the wind to pass over the earth in the receding of the waters. After the end of 150 days, the waters abated, and the ark came to rest upon the mountain of Ararat. In the seventh month, 17th day, Adar, A-D-A-R, 2 the 17th day, the civil year. So when Noah opened a window and sent forth a raven, which went to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth, it wasn't until a dove was sent forth and returned with an olive leaf that Noah knew that the waters were abated from off of the earth. He stayed another seven days and sent forth the dove and the dove did not return. So then God told Noah to go forth with his family in the second month, 27th, day and this is chest man 27 to let the animals free so that they will go forth and multiply and replenish the earth noah built an altar and took of every clean beast and clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the on the altar and the lord smelled a sweet savor and the lord said in his heart that he will not curse the ground any more for man's sake because man's heart is evil from his youth neither will he again smite any more of the living things that he had done. So in chapter 9, this is again where God makes the covenant with Noah. And a covenant is a promise. Um, so he promised, and God's good for his promises. Unlike human beings, God is not going to ever break his promise. So he made a covenant, a promise with Noah that he would never destroy the world by flood. And he set his bow, his rainbow, in the cloud as a token of the covenant between God and the earth. And he promised to remember his covenant. So that is how we got the rainbow. Japheth, Ham, and Shem are the three sons of Noah. And of them, the whole earth was repopulated. And they were dispersed throughout the whole earth. Also in chapter 9, Canaan is cursed and Shem was blessed. Because Noah became drunk of wine and was uncovered in his tent. Ham, Canaan's father, saw this. And instead of just quietly covering him and not making a big deal about it, Ham actually went to his brothers and Shem and Japheth quietly took a garment and covered Noah. So Noah awakened and knew what Ham had done and he cursed Ham's son, Canaan, to be a servant of servants to his brethren. And he said, blessed be the Lord of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant and that God shall enlarge Japheth. So he blessed his other two sons. Um, and that he shall dwell in the tents of Shem and Canaan, and, Sh and Canaan shall be his servant. And again, Noah lived 350 years after the flood, and he was 950 years old when he died. Amazing, huh? And what a powerful story this, this is. Um, because of Noah and his family, and they had not corrupted and mixed in with all of the corruption that was going on, they, they, they kept their DNA clean. To, the, to, to what God had made them to be from the beginning, um, God spared them. And they were the only ones that could be spared because everything else on the planet was completely corrupt. So, um, and through Noah and his family was the earth repopulated. So we're going to go to chapter 10. And these are the genealogical records of Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Sons were born to them after the flood. Now remember, they had their wives with them, so um, they, re, they, they repopulated after the flood. Japheth's sons were Gomer, Magog, Made, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tyrus. Gomer's sons were Ashkenaz. This is where we get the Ashkenazi Jew. <laughs> Uh, Rif, Rifthath and Togamar. Javan's sons were Elisha and Tarshish, Kittites and Dodonites. From these, the coastlands of the nations spread out in their lands, each one according to his language, according to their families, into their nations. So Japheth enlarged exactly as Noah said that he would. You know, Japheth's descendants were actually 
more Euro European, as as we later learn, um, and and trace trace that genealogy. Ham's sons were Cush, Mizram, Put, and Canaan. Cush's sons were Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Rama, and Sabteca. And Rama's sons were Sheba and Dedan. Now Cush fathered Nimrod. And we're going to learn about Nimrod next week. <laughs> a little bit more. We're going to talk a little bit about him here. Nimrod. He started to become mighty in the land. He was a mighty hunter before Adonai. This is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before Adonai. The beginning of his kingdom included Babel. And we're going to talk about the Tower of Babel next week. So Babel, Erech, that is E-R-E-C-H, Akkad, A-C-C-A-D, and Kalna, C-A-L-N-E-H, in the land of Shinar. From that land, he went out to Assyria and built Nineveh, Rekavot, hyphen I-R. I'm going to spell that for you. R-E-C-H-O-V-O-T hyphen I-R. And then Kayla and Reston between Nineveh and Kayla. It is the great city. Mizram father, the Ludites, the Anamites and the Lehabites, the Neph. Tuhites and the Path Rusites and the Cas Caslulusites. <laughs> I'm probably not pronouncing that right. It's C A S L U H I T E S. From whom came the Philistines and the Caphtorites. Canaan fathered Sidon, his firstborn Hath, the, Je the Jebusite, the Amorite, the Gigashite, the Hivite, the Archite, the Sinite. The Ar Arvadite, the Zemurite, the Hamatite, and afterwards the Canaanite families were scattered. Now, Canaanite border was from Zidon, Z I D O N, as you go towards Gerar, as far as Gaza, as you go towards Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zebulun, as far as Lasha. So they really spread out um, these three sons. These are Ham's sons, according to their families, according to their languages, in their lands, in their nations. Sons were also born to Shem, who was Japheth's older brother and the father of all the sons of Eber. Shem's sons were Elam, Asher, Arpachshad, Lud, and Aram. Aram's sons were Uz, Hul, Gether, Mash, Arpachshad, fathered Sheila and Sheila fathered Eber. Two sons were born to Eber. The names of the first was Peleg, and that's P-E-L-E-G, because in his days the land was divided and his brother's name was Joktan, which is J-O-K-T-A-N. Joktan fathered Elmadad, Shelef, Hazarmaveth, and Zera, Hadaram, Uzal, Dikla, Obel, Abimel, Sheba, Ophir, and Havilah, and Jobab. All of these were Joktan's sons. Their dwelling place was from Misha till you come towards Sefer. From Misha till, till you come towards Sefer. Um, so these could possibly be the Sephardic, um, the Eastern Hill Country, the Sephardic Jewish people. These are Shem's sons according to their families, according to their languages, in their lands, according to their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah according to their genealogies and their nations, and from these the nations were dispersed on the earth after the flood. So you can see how they spread out um, to repopulate. So this is the genealogy chapter. So that is going to end this week's reading. Um, next week, we are going to actually go into the Tower of Babel, into Abraham and Sarah. So we are going to hit on, there's going to be a parashat or two, actually. Actually, no. Yeah, actually, there's at least two parashats, two Torah readings that are embedded in, in what we're going to do next week. 
um, and I will touch on that next week. So we're going to do chapters 11 through 23, only because I want to keep uh, keep a flow and keep the stories together. Because after that, we're going to do Isaac and Rebecca, and then and Jacob, and then we're going to do Joseph to to the very end of Genesis. So there's a reason why I had sectioned everything off that way so i'm going to pause this now and we're going to come back with an altar call and we're going to close up this week's um teaching <laughs>